Once doctors found little hope for these young lives. Today there is reason to rejoice. Is it science touched by something greater? A newborn with a rare and tragic illness, can she be spared a lifetime of pain? We have to make these wounds heal as fast as possible. Keith Morrison with the touching story of a mother's devotion and the doctors who saved her daughter. A toddler wanders into the frigid night alone. Can she be brought back from the brink of death? She was just frozen solid. Her head, everything was frozen. Bob McEwen on Erica's rescue. And a baffling question. Should one child be born so that another might live? This was just, you know, science fiction. Rob Stafford asks, is the world ready for this? To the medical ethicist who says, you should not have been able to do what you did, what do you say? In the world of medicine, the future is now. Desperate young families who face a life-altering challenge are about to receive a life-saving gift. Tonight, Medical Miracles, a Dateline People magazine special. From our studios in New York, here is Stone Phillips. Good evening. Necessity is the mother of invention, and nowhere is that more true than in the world of medicine. What was needed in the case you're about to see was a treatment to save the life of an infant born with a rare, incurable, and sometimes fatal disease. Out of sheer desperation, a team of doctors tried something that had never been done before. If it worked, it could save a life and ease a lifetime of pain for thousands of others. Here's Keith Morrison. It's a strange thing how sometimes the very darkest, worst moment in life, the thing you wouldn't wish on an enemy, starts the best thing a person ever does. It happened right here to an expectant mother, her family, and some frustrated doctors. The result changed them all and finally made life bearable for thousands of other people they would never have known. Lorraine and Randy Cameron had been building a good life here in Florida, and now their daughter Taylor was going to get her wish, a baby sister. Finally, yeah, I can have this baby. Did you know if it was going to be a girl or a boy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to, but I found out. <laughs> I'm too curious. A baby sister who seemed uncomfortable even before she was born. She would kick so strongly. And I, Randy said, you know what, did you ever ask a doctor, could that be something wrong? And of course I blew it off. There was no sense that this was a baby in pain or that there was any... No, you don't have any reason to... Think I mean, that way. You would never have thought what could, what could possibly be wrong with a baby that would cause you know, her to react this way or that way. 12 days after Halloween, 1998, the Cameron's baby girl, Tori Ryan, kicked her way out into the world. No, she's crying. There she goes. Randy shot this home video. The nurse tried to be reassuring, but everyone around Lorraine could see something was seriously wrong. What was it? Tori was missing whole sections of skin. Raw red patches covered her entire body. The home video caught Lorraine's first look and the first tears. Right away, the nurses and the doctor, oh, don't worry, babies always have, you know, different skin things, don't worry, don't worry. And I looked into her eyes, and it scared me. And I looked at Randy, and he's like, don't worry. And I said, you'll find out. They'll, you'll all find out. There's something terribly wrong with her. Of course, there was something terribly wrong, and none of the ordinary prenatal tests had found it. Tori had a very rare skin disease, epidermolysis bullosa, or EB. She was born without the proteins that keep skin attached to the body. In a newborn, it can be fatal. For Lorraine, it was devastating. And the feeling of incompetence and helplessness as a parent. I mean, when you have a newborn, it's supposed to be the happiest day of your life. You look at your child and you say, I'll protect you from everything. I couldn't even touch her. The slightest touch would cause a blister. Every kiss, every hug, every tickle would cause their daughter excruciating pain. And with hundreds of open blisters covering Tori's body, the threat of infection was overwhelming. 
I could just look into her eyes and wish she would go back to sleep to get out of the pain. And all I could say is, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And there was nothing I could do, there was nothing medicine could do to even treat her. At just five days old, Tori had lost 70% of her skin. Her entire body had to be wrapped in gauze to try to prevent any more blistering. And the blisters that did form, Lorraine had to lance right away to prevent them from spreading. So not only can I not comfort my poor little baby or protect her, I can't offer her anything, medicine can't offer her anything, and I learned I have to be the one to cause and inflict hours of pain on a daily basis for her. That's hard to swallow. <laughs> Soon after Tori's birth, the Camerons started searching frantically for any information about their daughter's disease, about EB, and found disturbing pictures attached to complicated medical terms. It was like a bad dream, reading the likely outcomes of the three main subtypes of the disease, some more severe than others. They prayed she didn't have the worst. They would lose their fingers, their toes. They can't eat food because their esophagus blisters, and they have to have surgeries to try to reopen it. I mean, the complications are endless. I couldn't imagine somebody wanting to live like that. Did you ever have any days when you thought to yourself, maybe it'd be better for her if she didn't come home? Definitely. EB is not a kind of disease. As many as 50,000 people have some form of it. There is no cure, and for some, no hope. But for Randy, it was always scenario. hope. I mean, we're going to do everything we have, to, everything we possibly can, to make her life, you know, as, as good as it can be. And we're not going to. We're not going to talk about her dying. Because we're not going to let that happen. And back at the hospital, Tori's skin doctor was also holding out hope, determined to find a way to treat Tori's wounds. It presents one of the greatest challenges, really, to a clinician who takes care of children with children's skin. Dr. Lawrence Schachner has spent his career caring for babies with EB, for hopeless cases. But this time, it might be different. After seeing Tori, Dr. Schachner was convinced that this was the time to try something new. He called in a colleague at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, Dr. Anna Falabella. She had very large wounds, and wherever she, she didn't have wounds, she had blisters. Can we start now? Dr. Falabella had never seen an EB baby before, but she had seen plenty of wounds. She's a wound care specialist. What did you think when you were asked to look in on Tori? My first impression was we have to make these wounds heal as fast as possible. And what is the, the best way of healing these wounds right now? Well, it would be a skin graft. Skin grafts, of course, are a common treatment for burns. But she would need healthy skin from one part of Tori's body to patch the damaged skin elsewhere. But Tori had no skin to spare, and what she did have was diseased. There was just one thing Dr. Falabella could think of and it had never been tried on a baby before. Test tube skin, bioengineering. Companies have developed technologies um, and ways to grow the skin in, a, in an amazing way. It's called aplograph, and believe it or not, the process begins with donated human skin cells, donated by parents of baby boys. From one foreskin that's obtained at, at circumcision, they can grow about 200,000 to 600,000 units of skin. Altogether, a football field's worth of skin. But remember, no one had ever tried this on a baby before, and never on anyone suffering from EB. Aplograph is usually used on adults with venous ulcers or diabetic ulcers. The Camerons were told it might not work but it wouldn't likely make it worse. What did they do? The cameras knew that many EB babies don't make it through their first two years, and so the decision was easy. Basically, we, we were afraid that she wasn't gonna come home anyway, so when they're saying there's no downside risk, it wasn't really a tough decision to make. 10 days after she was born, Dr. Falabella gingerly placed the patches of bioengineered skin on the worst of Tori's wounds. There were no stitches, just a bit of glue to hold them in place. It took us about 40, 50 minutes. For the next 72 hours, all they could do was wait. 
She's horrible right now, but she should get better. And then something incredible happened. It worked. The aplograph bonded to Tori's skin. About three days later, uh, a vast improvement in the appearance, even to the layman's eye. And by two weeks, it looks like apparently normal area of skin. Finally, some relief. But doctors caution aplograph is not a cure, and it's not clear how long before the diseased skin grows back. But for babies with EB, like Tori, even a few weeks can make all the difference. It's the best treatment we have. It heals their wounds fast, it provides pain relief, it closes the wounds quickly so that they don't get infected. Before long, word of Tori's success got out, and Dr. Schachner's phone started to ring off the hook. We had hundreds of phone calls, and we took the first 15, and in one day, working in two teams, we transplanted skin, the aplograph, onto 15 young people, infants through about a 30-year-old. In one day? In one day. It was a long day. I bet. <laughs> it was a rewarding day. And Tori? Well, as Tori grew, the Camerons got some good news. Can you show me your teeth, sweetheart? Tori's EB turned out to be the milder she form. She, has a, she might even outgrow one, the worst of it. When it finally sunk in, it was like, oh my God, we finally have some hope now, you know. When I realized that she wasn't going to die from the disease, piece of cake. Okay, we can deal with this. And by then, the Camerons knew that around the country were thousands of EB sufferers. Many of them had never met anyone else with EB, never had the chance to meet someone who didn't stare. So the Camerons made it a calling to invite as many as could come to Disney World. The best day ever, they said. So much so, they've decided to do it again next year. Just meet someone with EB, says Lorraine. Like this young man in the hat. He has his own miracle story. At 34 years old, he's lived twice as long as doctors predicted he would. He's hanging in there, and he works. <laughs> so every time I feel weak, or that the mountain's too big, all I do is think about one day that he has to go through in his life, and it's easy. <laughs> Lorraine was a psychotherapist for nine years, and now devotes all of her time to help others with EB. All my life, I've wanted to find a cause and help, and how strange it was that it came to me this way when my daughter was born, that I had finally found a cause that needed so much attention. And in a way, found my calling, if you will, in life to be able to try to do whatever it is I could to help. Tori has entered her terrible twos now. She still gets those blisters, but now it's down to just four or five a day and hugs. Well, hugs and kisses are definitely in the picture. In fact, her doctors say, Tori's life should be happily normal. Where is that, Where is eight? It was an awful time back there at the nope. beginning, which ended up making nope. a lot of lives better. Yes. It's important to note that Aplograph is just a treatment, not a cure for EB. To learn more about EB, log on to our website. The address is dateline.msnbc.com. Still ahead, her baby daughter.